understanding the Middle East through the animal kingdom. I, I, I and like even if we're gonna put the racism aside, I don't know if there are any insights in here. No, the U.S. Uh, the US is no. like an old lion. Yeah. So we're just, um, you know, we're 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 at least a noble animal. We're noble, but uh, we're tired. And that's why other predators are no longer afraid to test us. Yes. Iran is to geopolitics what a recently discovered species of parasitoid wasp is to nature. Is there a better description of Lebanon, Yemen, Syria, and Iraq today? They are caterpillars. So basically everyone in those countries is a caterpillar. Which, you know, maybe, but they come, turn into beautiful monarch butterflies. So maybe, no, that's not what he's saying. The IRGC is the wasp. The Houthis, Hezbollah, Hamas and Qatab, Hezbollah. That's who uh, launched the attacks you know, on U.S. Uh, installations in Iraq are the eggs that hatch inside the host, Lebanon, Yemen, Syria, and Iraq, and eat it from the inside out. <clears throat> right. No mention of Israel anywhere here. We have no counter strategy that safely and efficiently kills the wasp without setting fire to the whole jungle. I mean, imagine the boomers who think this is smart. Hamas is the trapdoor spider. The spider leaps out at great sea speed, <laughs> seizes its prey, and hauls it back into the burrow to be devoured all in the fraction of a second. Oh yeah, that perfectly describes Hamas. They just get in there and take all the all the Jews back. They're just like spiders. There really isn't anything else though that we can learn about Hamas from this column. Um Netanyahu is like the Sifaka lemur. They're primates th and they, they hop back and forth. You notice how the um, Netanyahu, he won't talk about Israel though, but he talks about Netanyahu because he's the only villain in Israel. Oh yes, exactly. If only Netanyahu could be replaced and Israel would go back to being, uh, you know, this wonderful liberal place that just wants to live in peace with its neighbors. It's just Netanyahu is the is the problem that's that's been thomas friedman's line that's pretty They're much the biden administration's line now too they they pretend as if the only the only problem is with netanyahu otherwise everything would be um totally fine yeah well at least netanyahu like the u.s is in thomas friedman's mind a red-blooded mammal and lemurs are kind of cute so netanyahu is cute he just can't make up his mind that's the right. problem with netanyahu according to thomas friedman and that's why he's a lemur uh, yeah. But the, the 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 Arabs are evil vipers and spiders and you know, and then this imagery was never used historically for Jews by Nazis and other anti-Semitic fascists. It's not like he's just repurposing classical anti-Semitic imagery to apply to Arabs because they're getting in the way of our colonial plans. Yeah, so this is the New York Times. It's like the the spectrum of the New York Times is basically open racism, like. Uh, Thomas Friedman embodies. And then like the passive racism. So for example, in all these headlines, they go out of their way to like erase Israel's role. <coughs> and so he, this headline, for example, UN official says shells hit a crowded shelter in Gaza. Several deaths and dozens of injuries were reported in the strike. The shells just happen to hit a crowded shelter in Gaza. Whose shells are they? I don't know. I don't know. It, it's a mystery. And like, so it's like, that's like the that's what we get from the times. You have open bigots like Thomas Friedman. Then you have the more artful bigots who like go out of their way to whitewash everything Israel does. But Thomas Friedman, this is who he is. And you know, for some people might not have seen this clip. And so for those of you who have seen it, I apologize to subject you to it. I got it up. Okay. Yeah, go ahead. Well, this is Thomas Friedman describing, you know, talking about to to Charlie Rose, who used to, you know, be a really prominent uh talk show host on on PBS and, and CBS uh, about how, you know, why it was so important for the U.S. to invade Iraq. The terrorism bubble that basically built up over the 1990s said flying airplanes into the World Trade Center, that's okay. Wrapping yourself with dynamite and blowing up Israelis in a pizza parlor, that's okay. Because we're weak and they're strong and the weak have a different morality. Having your preachers say that's okay that's okay. Having your charities raise money for people who do these kinds of things, that's okay. And having your press call people who do these kind of things martyrs, that's okay. And that built up as a bubble, Charlie. And 9-11 to me was the, the, the peak of that bubble. 
And what we learned on 9-11 in a gut way was that that bubble was a fundamental threat to our open society. Because there is no wall high enough, no INS agent smart enough, no metal detector efficient enough to protect an open society from people motivated by that bubble. And what we needed to do <clears throat> was go over to that part of the world, I'm afraid, and burst that bubble. We needed to go over there, basically. Um, and So basically, this is just like his current column, that part of the world and go over there, how he identifies entire countries as insects. Um, uh, take out a very big stick um, right in the heart of, of that world and, um, and burst that bubble. And there was only one way to do it, because part of that bubble said, we've got you. This bubble is actually going to level the balance of power between us and you because we don't care about that. We're ready to sacrifice, and all you care about are your stock options and your hummers. And what they needed to see was American boys and girls going house to house from Basra to Baghdad um, and basically saying, which part of this sentence don't you understand? You don't think? You know, we care uh, about our open society. You think this bubble fantasy, we're just going to let it grow? Well, suck on this, okay? That, Charlie, was what this war was about. We could have hit Saudi Arabia. It, it was part of that bubble. Could have hit Pakistan. We hit Iraq because we could. That's Because we could, even though Saddam Hussein was mortally opposed to Al-Qaeda and... Al-Qaeda in Mesopotamia emerged as a result of the invasion that Thomas Friedman supported to burst the quote-unquote terrorism bubble, and then it morphed into the Islamic State. And Thomas Friedman has never been held accountable by the New York Times or anyone else for that idiocy. I mean, he's talking there, and he's he's saying this with such glee. Like, this yeah. is what gets him up in the morning. Going house to house from Baghdad to Basra, American boys and girls saying to like you know arab families suck on this like and look how much glee he takes from that i mean this guy is like a columnist at the you know most important newspaper in the united states uh he's taken seriously as a thinker he's a he's a demented not just like demented warmonger but weirdo i mean he's got these really sick fantasies about um harassing and terrorizing uh people in a country that he has nothing to do with uh why because the, some people in their region happen to have the crazy idea that they can resist u.s hegemony that's that, that's pretty much i think what's underneath what he's saying and uh you know i mean if we're doing animal metaphors i mean i don't know what thomas friedman is like <clears throat> everyone calls john bolton a walrus and i was trying to think like what is joe biden um what animal would our leader be because he didn't address Biden. He says, Netanyahu is a lion. I mean, Netanyahu is a lemur, but the U.S. is an old lion. But what is our leader? And I was thinking like about, you know, one of the most distinctive qualities of Joe Biden, which is that he likes to smell people. He likes to smell young girls' hair. I don't know if we'll get banned for showing this. You're not allowed to show this. Um. <laughs> And it occurred to me, maybe he's like a just a dog, because dogs love to smell people's hair. Yeah. And this was like, uh, I remember when the Biden camp, when Biden announced his run for president, the Biden campaign issued some statement about this, like to get out ahead of the story, so they would, so it wouldn't become an issue. Oh, I don't remember that. Wow. Hmm. But he, he's kind of like an old dog. I think a lot of our political class are like old dogs, like. Um, Nancy Pelosi, Diane Feinstein, John Fetterman, uh, to some extent Mitch McConnell and Diane Feinstein, but they they all have their old Yeller moment. Did you ever see Old Yeller? I've not seen Old Old Yeller. Okay, no. well, great children's film, like you know, from the classic Disney era. But uh -huh. at the end, Old Yeller. Sorry to ruin it for anyone who hasn't seen it, but at the end, Old Yeller gets rabies and he has to be put down. He's just like he's an, he's old. He's an old dog. And like that's where our political leadership is, is like when Nancy Pelosi is screaming at protesters, go back to China. That's like her old yeller moment. 
<laughs> and, and, you know, Biden has them all the time now where he just starts <laughs> screaming incoherently and he needs to be like carted away. Oh, yeah. And but Nancy had that also a few days before when she said that the people protesting genocide in Gaza outside her home might be working for Vladimir Putin and that the ceasefire is Putin's message. 